Chapter 24 Three Way Merging A three way merging git is the default way of merging. Default in the sense that all other merges either can only happen under specific circumstances, such as the fast forward scenario we discussed in the previous chapter, or you need to tell git explicitly that you wanted to do some other type of merge. If you just tell git to merge, it will check whether a fast forward merge is possible, and if not, it will do a three way merge. So that begs the question, what is a three-way merge? And arguably a more interesting question, why is it called a three-way merge? Is it because with a honey in the middle there's some leeway? Sadly, no. It is called a three-way merge because Git needs three commits to make this merge work. The most recent commit of each of the two branches we're merging, in other words, the tip of those branches, and a merge commit which is a special commit Git will create that will have the two other commits as its ancestors. When we ask Git to merge something, we will immediately know whether Git is using a fast forward merge or a tree ray merge. That is because in a fast forward merge, Git does not need to add a commit, it just moves labels. So it will do the commit and that's the end of it. However, if a fast forward merge is not possible, Git will need to create a merge commit. And when we commit, we need a commit message for the log. So the moment we ask Git to merge and it needs to do a three-way merge, it will prompt us for the commit message, which tells us that this will be a three-way commit. To trigger a three-way merge in our example repository, we first need to make sure that our two branches each have changes or commits on them that are not in the other branch. We are currently on the main branch, but we could run git switch main to make sure we are. Now let's add an extra line to our hello.md file that says add it in main. If you run git status, git will tell us that there are changes to the hello.md file and suggest that perhaps we should stage them. But we already know that, so let's add them to the staging area with git at hello.md. Then we can commit with git commit minus m and then between quotes commit on the main branch. Now that we've added a commit to our main branch, let's do the same on our my-feature branch. First, we switch to the branch with git switch my-feature. Next, let's add an extra line to our feature.md file that says edit in my-feature. Let's add and commit this change too by running git add feature.md followed by git commit minus m and then between quotes commit on the my-feature branch which is our commit message. Okay, we now have two branches that each have a commit on them that the other branch does not have. This scenario cannot be merged with a fast forward merge. As a matter of fact, if we run git log now, we see something that is interesting, but at this point should not be surprising. Remember, we are currently on the my-feature branch, and sure enough, the commit log tells us that both the head and mydas feature labels are on the most recent commit. However, nowhere in the commit log can we see the main label. It's like it does not exist somehow. It of course does exist, but it's not shown because by default, git log will look at the DAG and will follow a trail from where head is to its ancestor commit and then to that commit's ancestor and so on, essentially paddling upstream in our DAG river and so it will never come across the most recent commit on the main branch. But if we do git log minus minus all, git will just show us all commits. All right, now that we've established that this situation cannot be merged with a fast forward merge, let's switch to the main branch and ask git to merge the my dash feature branch. We do that by running git switch main followed by git merge my dash feature. Sure enough, Git will prompt us for a commit message, although it's being helpful and has already provided a default message for us saying merge branch my-feature. If we inspect the commit log with git log, we see that we once again have all labels in the log. However, there's some interesting things to take note of here. For one thing, the head and main labels are now on the merge commit, which is the one Git created but the my-feature label remains on the last commit in the my-feature branch. This is because we merge the my-feature branch into the main branch. In other words, no changes whatsoever were made to the my-feature branch. The only changes, the new merge commit, 
were made on the main branch because that's the one we're merging into. Let's have a look at this merge commit that Git created. We have its ID right there in the log, so we can use git show to show it in detail. What we can see is that there are no real changes in this commit. It's essentially an empty commit. It has a log message, an author and a date, but it did not record any changes. What it does include is the IDs of the commits that it merged. If we check these IDs against our log, we can see that they were, at the time of the merge, the most recent commits on each of the merged branches. In other words, these IDs together with the merge commit itself make up the three commits that together form a three-way commit. Some people, let's call them Git purists, do not like this kind of empty merge commit, which is why Git also provides different ways to merge things. We'll have a look at such an alternative merging strategy in the next chapter.